Um, okay, I'm here with my friend and dermatologist, Dr. Frank, Hello. Dr. Paul Jared Frank. So I have a lot of questions about pregnancy stuff. Why are you Pre pregnant? Uh, yeah. yeah I think okay. So, so <laughs> all right. My first question is, what? Let's start with the body. Yeah. Stretch marks. Everyone's telling me like I need to like be rubbing myself down with yeah. like oil and cocoa butter, but I feel like isn't it just hereditary? A lot of it is hereditary. A lot of it really just has to do with the speed of the skin stretch. Um, not everyone like pops graciously and grows slowly. Uh, and this is true of even young adults who are weightlifting or going through growth spurts. The point is there's nothing magic, but you can massage the area. It doesn't matter whether it's with coconut oil or any other type of oil, but anything that you can do to relieve that stretching sensation mm. is going to minimize them, not prevent minimize. them. Minimize. Then we have a whole bunch of things to do afterwards. V-beam for redness, Fraxel, microneedling. There are tons of things to do, but the tr trick is to do it early. So as soon as your doctor allows you to do procedures, mm. you want to start early. Okay, that's good. All right, another thing. Um, this is I'm just starting with the real like gnarly stuff first. Varicose veins. I'm not going to show you what's happening like under here, yeah. but it's not cute. And I'm wondering, is this like the beginning of the end? Usually, as long as you're on the planet Earth, gravity is going to move the blood down. But again, strong genetic component. You can wear compression stockings, light ones, while you're pregnant. That will help. Uh, but Are again, they really going to help? They will help a little bit because it's about keeping the blood flow back. Okay, um, okay. So I think doing that is very, very important. Again, under the guidance of your uh, obstetrician. But then again, hitting it as soon as possible when you're done, done with breastfeeding and all those things, and there aren't a lot of options. Okay. And, but is it, uh, maybe this is something I made up in my head. I kind of felt like once you have one, it's like then like the legs just give out. It's like, true. Well, it's almost wanna... like whack-a-mole. Like yeah. you, you treat it and then you're back in like a year. Well, for people who have more of a deeper insufficiency, which happens a lot after pregnancy, mm -hmm. there are more advanced medical treatments to kind of put, you know, refix the dam. Okay. But you're right. You can be chasing your tail a little bit. Okay. But you need to be evaluated after, after the pregnancy. Okay, cool. Look, we're going to bring it up above the neck right now. Um, let... <laughs> When I walked in, you thought that I had lipstick in my on my cheek, and I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I think we're gonna have to switch the camera around now. For okay, this. hold on. Let's do that. Yeah. You see that? It's this beautiful pregnancy yeah. glow <laughs> yeah. here. It's okay. um, Laura Mercier illuminated tinted the moisturizer. Big, you know, <laughs> the, the biggest myth uh -huh. about pregnancy skin mm -hmm. is that women come in and they're like. I thought everyone's pregnant skin is supposed yeah. to be glowing and beautiful and it really puts untowards pressure on women because the fact of the matter is some women have beautiful skin when they're pregnant, others are miserable. Acne, melasma, right. broken capillaries, If you have freckles, flushing, you get more freckly, it right? It gets worse. So it's really kind of this unfair expectation and there are limited amounts of things that you can do and you obviously have to be careful with them. So this is the most common question, like what about acne? Right. And again, some people get better, some people get worse. If you're someone that got better on birth control pills, chances are you'll be pretty good when you're pregnant. So what can you do for this kind of thing? Like what are topical options and are, are there any like are there in office procedural options? options. Mm -hmm. Well, safe ones. <laughs> you, can, you can't use certain topical medications, certainly nothing, no retinoids, Retin-A. You don't wanna use a lot of topical antibiotics, but you can get prescription erythromycin you can get prescription azelaic acid, uh, which is in a product called Phenacia. These are prescriptions. Mm -hmm. um, you can take oral erythromycin if you really have severe cystic acne going on. Uh, topically, you know, everyone is controversy with like beta and alpha hydroxy acids. Yeah, someone I told me I couldn't use those. You could use alpha conservatively. Mm -hmm. um, I think manual exfoliation is going to be better if you're going to be doing that. So you can use scrubs. Again, when you're pregnant, it's all about keeping drugs out of your body. Um, there are some okay. that exactly. There are some that are safe. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing like that. And so there weird. are some that are not. But contrary to popular belief, a lot of the lighter laser therapies are very safe because laser is just light. It's non-carcinogenic, and it only penetrates like a fraction of a millimeter into the skin. So things like laser genesis, uh, the newer Neo by Aerolase is a great acne is treatment. Is the um, is the numbing cream? This, isn't, isn't that a drug? That's isn't a that drug. a problem? Yeah, so we really, I, I only use lasers that don't involve numbing cream. Okay. Now, again, if you need numbing cream for something like a little mole removal or something that has to be done medically, a yeah. small amount of anesthesia is going to be fine. But you don't want to sit with like an hour of topical anesthesia sure. and like do a Fraxel. 
but clear and brilliance uh, for um, melasma can be done. Pico laser, like tattoo type technology, can be done with no anesthesia. Laser genesis, and these are great. Um, LED lights are great. That's okay. And you can get a facial. LED lights are great, the anti-inflammatory, and again, they're not penetrating systemically. You want to avoid any systemic treatment. And again, although there may be so many drugs that are safe, we're not about to experiment on pregnant women. Uh, so, you know, it's really about consulting with a dermatologist, getting approval from your OBGYN mm -hmm. and finding a good facialist because a lot of them could do, I mean, I usually refer, we have our medical assist, uh, esthetician editor here or my friend Georgia Louise is great dealing with pregnant right. women. Um, but I think it's important if you have problems with your skin to start early in the pregnancy and get kind of a routine. So we do all this stuff, but is it like now that you're a, a woman who has like, you know, had a child, is the melasma and all that stuff like gonna come back? Is it permanent? Like, well, it's very it's hormonal. Just, how much does your skin really change, kind of indefinitely? Well, it depends. Just like there's some bodies that bounce back and yeah. others that don't. A lot of this is genetic, but a lot of people who get melasma for the first time or yeah. acne for the first time, generally it does not come back because obviously it's the estrogen content sensitivity that's doing it. Uh, you may see it again when you're pregnant. So there's so many variations of a the theme. Again, I always tell people clean up your room before it gets too dirty and just address the situation. Realize that there are things you can do while pregnant. You just need it under the guidance uh, of a professional. Okay, and another question, and this is like more vague one, but I think you'll know what I'm talking about. Vague or vain? It's vague. Oh, it's, okay. it's vague and vague. Okay, okay so okay. It's, it's a little mean too. <laughs> so I saw my friend once after she had a baby. I yeah. haven't seen her in a couple months. She is so gorgeous. Damn, she looked tired. She looked so, like her face yeah. had like changed. It almost looked like everything fell. It's not that she like gained weight or lost weight. It was, it was just this look of, of like despair yeah. and exhaustion. That, that look only lasts about 30 years until they're out of college <laughs> and can pay for their own bills. That's just having a baby. I'm a parent of two. What, uh, what, if she came in, what would you say? I know you don't have a picture of her, but like <laughs> what... Is there like a certain type of product that you should use after or like is it just in all honesty good, good old-fashioned sleep yeah this is like this is lifestyle management right here okay and this is why people are like can you inject something could you laser something and I tell people that all the things I do are generally icing on the cake yeah it's the stress management the sleep the exercise the finding time for yourself yeah these are the things I could do the, the melasma, the little bit of Botox, the filler, the things like those are those are things we do after you're done breastfeeding, mm -hmm. um, and that's usually me and the hair colorist are the first people that they see after they're done breastfeeding. Uh, but like I said, there are certain things you can and cannot do, and it's really about putting drugs in the body or not. One more drug question for acne: Is benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid? I would okay probably no? stay away from those. Okay, I All probably right. would again. There are just no studies, and there are some OBGYNs that say eh, it's not a big deal. Um, I just think that there are options that don't take even the minimal risk, you know, yeah. like light lasers or manual abrasion or facial. So just stick to the safe things. And what's the last, like, for my last question, yeah. what is the most kind of ludicrous thing you've heard about, you know, pregnancy and and skincare. I've well, heard all kinds of like you shouldn't use like this very specific random moisturizer. Well, I have had many patients try and convince me that using filler is just injecting sugar into them so it should be safe during pregnancy. And they have a friend who's like <laughs> European and they do it all the time there. And I'm like, listen, you know, a lot of women before they get pregnant, they get very concerned about their because they don't want to lose themselves, so to speak. So it's really about like talk -asthesia and kind of calming them down talk a little bit. Talk <laughs> You know what I mean? That's really it because the fact of the matter is you're going through a challenging moment yeah. in life. It's a beautiful experience. There are things that we can do before, doing, and after. So just live as healthy as possible and we'll take care of the rest.